Heavenly Father, we thank you so much once again for this opportunity to have life. And I pray, Lord, that as we navigate this topic today, that we'll be able to understand the importance of your spirit dwelling in us and helping us to be the men and women that we need to be. I thank you, Father God, for these young people, their purpose, their, their path, their, uh, their, their place in you. Uh, Father, I pray that I do them a good service, do you a good service in ensuring that these young people understand what it means to reset and to set themselves up for success. With that being said, Father, I come against every demonic spirit that may war against myself. I cover my wife. I cover my daughter. I cover my family. Any type of retaliation, I cancel now in Jesus' name. I cover these young people. They will be receptive in the name of Jesus. I command all demonic spirits in this room to leave in Jesus' name. With that being said, Father, I turn my attention back to you. I thank you for that authority, and I thank you for the manifestation of it, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I do not count it lightly. In Jesus' name, do pray. Amen. All right, today's topic. Today we're going to be talking about the power of a reset. The power of a reset. I have two scriptures for you. Psalms 5110 and Psalms 139 verses 23 through 24. Psalms 5110, yes, ma'am. And Psalms 139 verses 23 through 24. Psalm 51 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 139, 23 to 24 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous, bad, terrible, hurtful way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I have three questions I'm going to answer today. And that is, what is a reset? Why must we reset? And how to ensure your reset goes into effect? Mm -hmm. First, three questions. What is a reset? Why must we reset? And how to ensure your reset goes into effect? One last time. What is a reset? Why must we reset? And how to ensure your reset goes into effect? problem. Many young people are in a dire need of a reset. They desperately need to set their thinking and their feelings to God's default settings. Many young people's minds have been set on the wrong settings for a long time. Their views, their vision, their voice, and their values have been offset. Many young people are in a dire need, desperate need for a change, for a reset. They desperately need to set their thinking and their feelings to God's default settings. Many young people's minds have been set on the wrong settings for a long time. Their views, their perspectives, their vision on life, their voice, and their values have been offset. Reset by definition means to set again or to set differently, to set anew, to adjust again after initial failure. Set again or set differently, set anew or adjust after an initial failure. Settings by definition is the manner or position or direction in which something is set. Many young people right now, and, and, and a lot of you all in this room possibly, could be in a situation where you just need to change, where you need to reset your life, where you're able to set your life anew, afresh, to set it again. The verse says in Psalms 51:10, "Create in me, O God, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me." That text is so valuable; it's so important. I have to ask God, man, God, if there's anything in me that's not of you, create in me a new heart, a clean heart. 
A lot of us are oblivious just how des uh, deceitful our hearts are. If you truly knew the depths of your heart, you would be desperately clinging to God. Every day I have to make sure that my heart is in alignment. A lot of us, we're allowing our hearts as sponges to soak all things in culture. Not everything in this life should have access to your heart. Your heart is valuable. Your heart is precious, but it's deceitful and deceptive. I have to create, Father, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew, change, and give me a right spirit within me. I got to make sure that I don't allow my life to be a spirit of anger, a spirit of a low self-esteem, a spirit of fear. I got to make sure that I have a spirit of God, a spirit of vigor, a spirit of, of victory. Verse Psalms 139 says, search me. Oh, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be anything grievous or hurtful in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's break this text. And there's three things in Psalms 139 that we have to pay attention to. There's three things. Search me. Try me and lead me. Search me. Try me and lead me. The verse says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Search me means I must allow him to search all of me. The moment you realize that you are not where you need to be and that there's greater things that God has for you, there has to be something in that says, God, I'm opening my whole life to you. Have you given God full access to your heart to search you, to give you the root reason by which you're doing what you're doing? Do you even know why you feel the way you feel? The reason why many of us are not succeeding is because we're trying to treat symptomatic things, but not the source of a thing. We treat the symptoms. We treat the fruit, but not the roots. We're treating the obvious versus the, uh, the, the uh, uh, unseen. There's a reason why you behave the way you behave. There's a reason why you do what you do. There is a reason. Therefore, I got to say, God, search me. Search all of me. Let me know what's inside of me that's not of you. I must let him search all of me. Have you given God all of you? Because God surely gave all of himself to you. Do you know what it takes to leave heaven? Do you know what it takes to come through a manger? Do you know what it takes to be searched after by Herod? Do you know what it takes to grow up as a young man, as a carpenter? Do you know what it takes to be betrayed, to, to, to be misused, to be beaten, to be crucified? He gave all of himself. And if he's given all of himself, we surely should be able to say, God, search all of me. The verse says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Therefore, if I know just how sick I am, I go to a doctor. If you were sick right now with stage four cancer, if you were sick right now with a disease, where will you go? But the issue is because we're not physically ill, we think we're okay, but we're spiritually ill, emotionally ill, mentally ill. And it's causing us not to fulfill the will of God. It says, try me. Try me and know my thoughts. Thoughts are important. So many of us, we are entertaining thoughts that didn't even come from God. So I got to try, God, try me to make sure that I'm thinking correctly. How many of you all are months away, years away from thinking poorly or having consequences in your life that will destroy your life? You got to change the way you think about you. The devil knows that thoughts are seeds. Anyone that's been around me for a long period of time understands that I teach this, that thoughts are seeds. And if you allow your thoughts to be sunken or a thought to be sunken into the, your soul or soil, it will produce of its kind. Will an apple tree produce an orange? No. Can an orange tree produce strawberries? No. Can a negative thought produce a positive outcome? No. So you got to be very careful of what you think because thinking is a choice. The sin is not in the thought. The sin is thinking on the thought. That's why it's our responsibility to say, God, try me. Because when gold is tried by fire, the impurities come to the top and it's swiped off. So God says, let me try you. Let me prune you. Let me reveal to you that you're thinking inappropriately. I must let him try me or test me. Our thoughts matter. It says, lead me. <clears throat> oh, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous, bad, terrible, hurtful way in me and lead me in the way everlasting, I must let him lead me. Who are you following? What influences are leading you? 
Whoever will lead you will determine what you have in life. Lasting by definition means forever or a very long time. So I got to let God lead me. Young man, you got to let God lead you. The measure of a man's leadership in a family is based upon how his ability to be led. If you're not led by God right now, you're not going to be able to lead a family. Every day I got to be led to my knees and say, God, I got to make sure, Lord, is there anything in me that's keeping you from leading me? Because one thing I do not want is to lead my wife and lead my daughter or lead my family into a place they shouldn't be. I'm a pillar in three families. At 36 years old, I'm a pillar in the, in the Ezzy family, in the Lane family, in, in, in the McCorkle family, and in, in my family. I'm a pillar. So therefore, I got to make sure that I'm always before God, saying, God, lead me to ways that are everlasting. What are you investing in right now that won't last long? Relationships that won't last long. Friendships that won't last long. Careers that won't last long. So you need God to lead you. Because a lot of people are being led to being dead. Lasting forever. I always ask God, lead me to write the books that will last forever. Lead me to preach the message that will last forever. Lead me. Lead me to do things that will be everlasting. Right now, what are you doing that's going to ensure that your kids, kids, kids eat? That will ensure that, that your legacy, young men, that your last name will mean something. I say this in my economic class. Most people focus so much on their first name that they forget their last name. See, Joshua, that's me. Ezzy is a legacy. I got to think about the Ezzy's. I can't just think about Joshua because Joshua can die one day. Joshua will die one day, 40, 50, 60 years from now. But the Ezzy name has got to be valuable. So I got to make sure that I'm giving the Ezzy name an everlasting positive Viewpoint. Ways by definition means methods, style, or manner of doing something. That lead me in the way, the methods, Father, the style, the manner of doing something everlasting. Where are you going? What highway are you on? The Bible says, broad is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. Narrow is the way, narrow is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to what? Few on the narrow a lot on the broad. You got to determine which highway am I on? Am I on a highway to hell or a narrow way to heaven? You got to process that because right now you don't even know where the cliff is before you. Right now you got to say, God, am I being led in the methods, my methodologies, the way I think, the way I feel, the way I perceive? Is it of you? What's my style? All of all, all of y'all look so good today. Y'all got a style. Everyone got their own unique style. There's nothing wrong with having a style. This one over here been styling and profiling for a long time. Everyone's been styling. Everyone has a style. They have a way they carry themselves. But what did, how is your spirit man dressed? Who cares how you look on the outside? How is your inner man dressed? How are you dressed on the inside? How are you looked upon? Demons can care less about how beautiful your dress is or how sharp your suit is. They care about how strong your faith is spiritually. The questions we're going to talk about is what is a reset? Why must we reset? And how to ensure your reset goes into effect. It's resetting, rebooting, or restarting your life. Let's get the definition. Is about improving your current situation. Right now, you're in the second quarter of school, and you can't, you can't escape it. Some of you all in the house right now, you can't escape. Some of you all in a situation that you just can't leave. So resetting is not about leaving your current situation. It's about improving your current situation. Who cares what your first quarter was? The clock is still running. You still got three quarters left and a half time. You still have time. So you got to make sure that you are saying, what can I do? To reset my life now to ensure that I improve my current situation. It says it's about looking at your life and deciding what needs to change. What needs to change in your life? You can't expect the external of your life to change if your inside hasn't changed. Resetting, rebooting, or restarting your life is about improving your current situation. It's about looking at your life and deciding what needs to change and then making that change happen. It's about heading in a different direction with different priorities. I got to make a change. I can't date my wife the same as I dated her eight years ago. I can't. 
She's a mother now. Therefore, I have to be in a constant state of change. It don't matter how tired I am. If that baby girl cries, I got to be there. I, I, I can't just rely on who I used to be. And I can't teach the same anymore. I don't want my anointing to dry up. I want that my anointing to be fresh. I want to make sure that my engagement with every student is, is connecting. I, I, I can't stay the same. I have to change. I, you can't stay the same. You can't be complacent. You got to be a person that says, God, create in me a new heart. Renew me a right spirit so that I can continue to be in this river of redemption, this river of, of, of being changed. And if you can't inc- improve your current situation, you won't be able to handle the next situation. If you can't handle sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade and beyond, how can you ha- handle the things that you desire to have? Now, why must we reset? We said reset by definition means to set again or differently. We all know when we play a video game and <laughs> something wrong with the console, we reset it. You know, when the computer's acting up, we press the reset button, hoping that it starts anew. So we have to reset. We have to reboot. But why must we reset? We must reset to God's defaults. And before I get into my points, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, their mindset or their mental settings or their life settings were set appropriately everyone knows that when you get a brand new iphone or for those who have androids no matter what you get a device wise you get to do what with it you go right to the set you go to the settings to some right you you set your. i remember one time i was on the settings on my phone and you know for those who know me for the last two years my phone went from this big to about this big <laughs> it took a while for me to to evolve my my cellular um experience but either way so I was used to the small phone. Then, then when I got the, the, I don't know what the other one was I had before this one. Then I got the 13, whatever, whatever this is, the Pro Max thing. And, then, and I hit this button that said, uh, I don't even know what the setting was, but it made my screen large. And it was like, and I was stuck there. And I was like, fam, I don't want to look at D that big. You know what I'm saying? And so I was, I was confused because I misset something. Right? Just one swipe of a finger can misset something. And all of a sudden now you're stuck on a setting that you didn't even determine to set it on. When Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, they were set appropriately. God gave them the settings. He said it looks good. We was made in his image and his likeness. But when Satan came in, he came to, to, to change the mental settings of Eve. What did he say to Eve? Did God really what? Say. The devil in the Garden of Eden had no weapon. Fast forward when, from the Garden of Eden to the wilderness. We see that Jesus was tempted by the devil. And the devil talked about the, the dominion that was given unto me. Did God give Satan dominion? Who gave Satan dominion? We did. Satan came into the garden with no power. He didn't make Eve. He didn't force the fruit in her mouth. What he did was he changed the setting of her mental settings and said, did God really say that you were sure to die? Of course God. See, see, Eve must not have been tapped into her full intellect to understand that death is trifold, that death is not just one way. Death is not just physical. Death can be mental. Death can be emotional. There's dead people living in this room right now, spiritually dead, emotionally dying, mentally dying, all because their mental settings have been set off. So when Eve entertained the suggestion and Adam with her, the Bible is interesting. When you look at the text, it says that it wasn't like Adam was 20 trees down. It wasn't like it wasn't like Eve was like, hey, yo, Adam, have you tried these? Adam was with her. If you and God ain't straight sellers, you'll let anything talk to your woman. You'll let anything talk to your dream. Ladies, you'll let anyone talk to you. You got to be so connected with God. I know what God said about me. I know God said I'm chosen. So why am I going to question what he chosen me to do? I'm not going to start rapping now. I'm not going to start uh, 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 selling insurance. (laughs) I know who I am. When you don't know who you are, you will question the devil. You will question or entertain the questions of the devil. So as we continue to understand is that God's default settings was meant to be set on him. The default the baseline settings. The issue is we allow the enemy to change our settings or we try to change our settings. God set you the way you look. And now you want to change the way you look? God set the way you are supposed to be as a person, but you want to change your personality? God made you fearfully. God made you wonderfully. If you haven't heard it before, fearfully means that God respected you, that God respected you while you was even made in sin. He said, I respected you. Before you even think about respecting me, I fearfully made you. 
God took his time with you. Uh, when a kid come to me talking about they got a big forehead, I said, man, God gave you that big forehead. God, God gave you that. And carry it, carry it proud. I've been, people been cracking jokes about my big forehead, and I tell them, you know what? You just mad because my brain bigger. Your forehead small, your brain small. So let's talk about that. Right? So when you understand that God made you this shade of, of brown, this shade of Caucasian, this shade of whatever, you will embrace it. God not only made you fearfully, but he made you wonderfully, made that, meaning that God created you different. And right now in this room, there's a lot of people allowing their God-given dream to die because they allow someone to change their setting. You got to begin the process and begin to think, who have I allowed to change my settings? Before I get into these points, let's talk about the three R's. There, what's our three R's for the school? The three R's: respect, responsibility, and what? Ready, right? Respect. <laughs> ready, yeah. Respect, responsibility, and ready. See, resetting is all about making sure that I change the way I see me. Disrespect from a person is a sign they don't respect themselves. So when I say, when I reset myself, I have to reset my respect and say, do I love me? It, I don't care what a teacher say to you. When you love you, you'll let it slide. I don't care what a friend says about it. when you love yourself, you let it slide. People who respond to insecure people have been proven to be insecure. So when someone talks about you, you respond to them, you're basically telling them that they have power over you. All of us have insecurities. That if someone says something about whatever, it's going to rise. But something has to rise beyond it. It says, no, I, you're secure than me. When someone questions your game, someone questions your name, or, or someone questions whatever it is, you got to begin to say, hey, I respect myself. Now, I got to also be responsible. What's important about the word responsibility? There's two words in that word. For those who have been with me, you understand what that is. What, respond in what? I have to reset my respect, meaning I got to change the way I see me. I got to look at myself anew and say, I respect me. I got to look at my teacher. I got to look at my peers anew and say, I respect them. I also got to reset to ensure, am I responsible? Responsibility means I have the ability to respond. Do you have the ability to respond to what you want to have in life? You can have the desire to go to the league. You can have the desire to have a career. You can have a desire to be an entrepreneur. You can have all the desires in the world. But if you don't have the ability, you won't be able to get in. Listen, it is if, if, if uh, Miss Riley wouldn't ask me to speak if I couldn't talk. If I couldn't talk, she would never, she would never ask me to speak. I'd be out here doing this, gang signs or sign language. <laughs> right? Because they're going to be like, okay, this guy can't talk. So they know that he can't respond. Right? So if you don't have the ability, then why are you responding to something that you're not strong enough to respond to? So now I got to reset my methods. I got to reset my mindset. I got to reset everything to ensure that I have the ability. Next, I got to be ready. If God was to come back right now, who's ready? Don't raise your hand. Because if you raise your hand, you don't even know. Think about it, though. If God was to come right now, who would be looking and be like, man, they all gone but, but me and them? That's real. One day there's going to come a day when God cracks that sky and everybody running to the mountains. The Bible says that they're going to try to run to the mountains. They're going to try to run to their caves. They're going to try to run to their underground cities. They got underground cities right now and every mountain will open up before him. Every knee will bow. I don't care if you 40 feet under the ground. The ground will open up for you to see his majesty. And in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be caught up. Will some of y'all barely lift out of your chair? Well, how far will you go? That's a real thing. So you can't play with life. Life is too serious to play with. Like, like eternity is forever. Like, 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 you can't just invest here. Here is temporary. I can't see. I'm thinking legacy. I'm thinking beyond me. I'm thinking about heaven. I'm thinking about when I get to heaven and see God in his glory, tears in my eyes. I cry every time I think about it. When I get to see my maker, 
my maker, the one that made me, and you're going to live your life as if he didn't make you? And you're not ready for him? Every day you got to wake up ready. You got to say, God, I'm ready to be used. Create in me a new heart. Make me ready, Lord. So when you come for me and you ask me to do anything, I'm ready. But there's going to come a day. And it's going to be a lot of, you know, hell is not going to be always just full of people that didn't love God. It's going to be a lot of so-called Christians in hell. The Bible, Jesus, God is confident about, like, listen, listen, uh, where I live, do all of y'all come home with me every day? No. <laughs> the only people in my house right now is Brittany Ezzy and Hannah Ezzy. And I don't care about too many people coming over. That's my home. That's our home. So I'm not going to sit there, oh, I wish they was here. <laughs> I wish everybody can come over and y'all gonna think I'm a perv. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm trying to say is God is so confident. He says, even if only 10 people come, we're going to heaven going to be lit. Heaven going to be jumping. Heaven's going to be good because I only want those who love me. Do you care about people that don't love you? Would you want to be friends with someone that don't love you? Why? They don't love you. So why you think God's going to cry because a bunch of people went to hell and didn't choose him? Are you ready? Yes. Resetting right now is about every area of your life. I have to take a moment to say, do I need to reset the way I think? Reset the way I uh, uh, live so that I can start the process of being made new. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, there are what? Old things and behold, all things are new. So I got to begin to say, God, reset me. And if you ain't saved in this room, if you don't know and you haven't had that spiritual reset, then how can you be set up for success? If you have been resetting and you've been re- saving, but but you drifted away, you got to say, God, you reroute me. <laughs> Lord, I made a wrong turn. I've been going down this this road 20 miles. Reroute me. Now, why must we reset? Because I got some more points that I have to cover. Why must we reset? We must reset to God's default settings. His default settings is how we were originally supposed to live, how we were supposed to originally function, our original way of living. And the devil is after to ensure that you do not get to those original settings because everybody in this room bears the image of God. When God looks at you, when demons look at you, when Satan look at you, he sees God. Why do you think he hates you? He hates you because you replaced him. Some scholars believe that Satan was the angel over worship. Some scholars believe that. And when he was in heaven, they said, or some people say, he was pipes. He he was music. That's why you think the industry, the music industry is so toxic now. He is music. And then when Jesus said, I saw Satan fall down as lightning, when Satan came down here, his pipes had no value no more. And then as he was looking over, and saw God forming Adam in the dust. Open up Adam's, after a while, open up Adam's and pulled out the rib, made a woman. I'm pretty sure Eve was singing in the garden before the fall. I'm pretty sure Adam clapped his hands before the Lord. I, I'm pretty sure that they stumped their feet. They, they became the worship pieces that replaced the Satan. That's why he don't want you to worship. He wants you to listen. Listen, I went to the Golden State game, went to the Hornets game this past Saturday. Soon as the Hornets went up, the Hornets went down by a few points. And then and then when what's his name locked up? uh, Was it locked up? Steph with Dennis. What's his name? Dennis Smith Smith locked up. The crowd was on their feet. You would have thought Jesus locked them up. (laughs) You would have thought Jesus was you would have thought. Right. People's hands was going up. People was moving their hands. And you begin to think that. People are celebrating a created thing, but don't even take time to celebrate or to praise the creator. Did LeBron make you breathe? Jordan make you breathe? Whoever your favorite person, are they responsible for the air in your lungs? And the lungs, the air in your lungs is being used to 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 praise another man, another woman, another idea, another concept. When God says the last time you talked to me was when you needed me. You didn't even talk to me. Just say, hey, how are you doing? 
You ain't talk to me and say, God, what do, do you have for me to do today? And God is like, man, like, like, yo, do you do you understand that that when when I show up, all knees will bow when I show up? That, that even the, the, the elites will have to bow and buckle their knees before him. He is the real deal. And we don't take the time to be real with him and to begin to get to know him and begin to give him all of ourselves. We don't know how many days we have left. We don't know how many hours we have left. If I was to die an hour from now, I want to make sure I gave him my all now. I ain't going to die, but it is what it is. Now, why must we reset? Number one, our, so our children, so that our children can be set. What you're doing right now is going to affect your unborn. See, see, when I talk about this, it's real for me right now. I have to re- go ahead, Sam. Oh, yeah. I have to reset. Change the way I think. <clears throat> change the way I feel. So that my children's children will be set. That doesn't mean that I I set them up financially. It's about setting them up mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Right. Setting them up. So right now, what habits are you creating right now that's going to hurt your kids? Because let me tell you something. How you live today could be how your kids live when they 13, 14. Do you know demons are territorial? They generational. Do you know if you look at your ladies, if you look at your great grandma and your grandma and your mama and then look at you, you'll see some similarities. If you look at your great grandfather, your grandfather and you, listen, my great greats all my, from all the Ezzies all the way down to me. There's some things that I saw in me that was in my dad that I heard was in my granddad. And I said it stops here. Demons are generational. They want the same issues that your mama struggled with, what your daddy struggled with to for you to struggle with. When you go to the doctor. I don't know if you're old enough for, them, for these questions. They'll ask you, is there any diabetes in your family? Any heart disease in your family? Why? They're trying to see, they're trying to see if there's a connection. Why? Because if your mama has salty food, then she fed you salty food. If your mama had 14, 15 Debbie cakes on the top of the free refrigerator and it had uh, 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 um, um, fruity rounds or fruit loops on the, on the stove, then you're going to be diabetic as well. They know that there's physical habits passed on and demons are looking for open doors to carry through you. If your grandma or great grandma had a baby out of wedlock and then your grandma has a baby out of wedlock and your mama has a baby out of wedlock, you better open your eyes. If your grandfather was broke and your dad was broke, you got to make sure you're not broken. Demons want to make sure that they carry your lineage. Why do you think? When you look at Matthew chapter one, they, they, that, when I was a kid, it was like I skipped Matthew chapter one because who wants to read the genealogies? <laughs> but there's power in that genealogy that the line from Adam all the way to Jesus had 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 Rahab, had David, had all kind of mess in it. The change can start with you. So I got to reset so that my children's children said I got to make sure. Right. Go. So go ahead. Lineage means, good question, hold on, <laughs> my brain just went out. Uh, lineage is like legacy. Lineage is like your, your, your family beyond you, like, like my, my, my children's 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 children, my lineage, my legacy. Good question, good question. Number two, so that we can properly vet. Vet, meaning to see who's really with us. I have to reset to make sure I can properly vet my friends, to vet my decisions, to vet whatever is going to be connected to me. I got to properly vet. Number three, why must we reset the God's default settings so that we can get what's best for us? What God has for you is looking for the new you. I'm pretty sure God would not brought my wife to me at 23 because I wasn't fully who I needed to be for her to meet. I had to become the person that will match and draw that. Let me tell you something about purpose. <clears throat> you can only draw what has been drawn. Like if you have a, a, a ugly image of you, you're only going to draw that ugly image. So if you want what's best for you, you got to reset. Number four, so that we can minimize regret. Could, do you know that God is so gracious that he's giving you an opportunity to stop doing what you're doing? 
Like, I don't, I, I like to swim in the grace side of God, not the mercy side of God. The grace side of God is like grace has given me the ability to do or give me the favor to function, the favor to be fruitful. His grace is with me. His grace is undeserved. And he's serving it to me every day to keep me afloat. Mercy side is saying, I'm going to keep sinning and I hope God be merciful. There is going to come a day. There is going to come a time where his mercy is what it is. And the consequence is what he gives. See, God can save you from your sins. But it doesn't always save you from the consequences of them. So if I reset right now the way I do my schoolwork, the way I do my life, the way you do whatever, then it minimizes regret. I say this all the time. 20 years from now, econ people know this. 20 years from now. 20 years from now, you're going to be how old? 30. Ooh, boy, y'all going to be up there with me. 36, 37, 35, 34. So 34, 34, 35, 36, 37. At 37, where do you want to be at 37? Sitting where? Where would you like to, where do you like to sit and reflect? Mm -hmm. All right, so shh, listen, listen. In 20 years, Madeline, in her room, is going to be reflecting and her reflection will either be filled with regret or rejoicing because of what she's doing right now. The 19-year-old me, I thank him. The 24, 25-year-old me, I thank him. The 28-year-old me, I thank him because it was in his sacrifices that set me up for success. And right now, I want my 46, my 56-year-old self to come talk to me. Now, I, ain't, I ain't trying to get weird or spiritual, but I want to be able to say... Josh, man, thank you for what you did at 37. That, that business decision, that, that being led by the Spirit of God set you up. Next, so that we can avoid being unnecessarily upset. How many of us have been in relationships that ended? Ended badly. Boy, y'all, sixth grade. Nah. That little puppy love. That's that little puppy love. They, that little puppy. I'm going to come over here. That's that little puppy love. How many people? <laughs> That's that puppy love. So what I'm saying is this, real quick, real quick. I'm almost done. I'm almost out your way. What I'm trying to say is, is that if I take the time to reset, to set my life again differently, to set it anew, to adjust it, then I can, un I can avoid unnecessary being upset. I can avoid an unnecessary heartbreak. I can avoid certain things. Last but not least, we can avoid... Unnecessary sweat. Things are supposed to be easy for us. I don't like to force anything. Everyone who played basketball, they say, let the game come to you, right? Mm -hmm. If you go out there and you're trying to force the game, you're going to have what? Turnovers. You try to force the game, you're going to be forced on the down 15 seats down on the bench. But when you let the game, why, let, me ask, let me ask you, why is it important for the game to come to you? I ask you, Tyler, why is it important for the game to come to you? So that you can fit in. Because what if, what, if, what if their defense is requiring me to just shoot threes? What if they set up a scheme where all I can do is only go left, right? So if I let the game come to me, that means I observe the game enough to know how can I fit in the game. So when I'm playing with the fellas at the, at the gym, I know when it's either time for me to carry or for me to set screens. I know the difference. So if I know that, okay, my team ain't whatever, I'm going to have to carry. So my big stuff going to try to go to the basket and do my fadeaway. I have to carry and sometimes your shoulders got to carry. And there are certain times when I'm playing, let's say if I got, uh, uh, just please understand when I say this. Well, if I have Tyler or Elias, let's start there. Like, I know for a fact I ain't the score. I'm going to set screens. I'm going to, if I know I got a shooter, I got, I'm going to set that person up. Because ego gets in the way of the flow of a game. If I try to force the thing about it, if you so focus on, on, on um, uh, offers and you focus on colleges, they ain't going to come see you. You got to know that you're so good at what you do that God will find you. You should just focus on being great. I don't care if coach asks you to do whatever. I don't care what it is. Excel in that. 
Because whatever God has for you, he has for you. But if you try to force it, to force a deal, you're going to find yourself out of God's will. You should only want to go to the school that God. I don't care if Nick Saban comes in here right now and offers you a full ride. I don't care if um, uh, Mike Shazette, no, hold on. Who's, uh, Coach K's retired, but, but uh, I, uh, Mike, what's, what's that guy from Kentucky? Basketball coach. Whoever the coach is, comes to you and offer you a contract or whatever. You got to be able to say, I got to pray about it. Why? Because if you sweat for it, then you got to keep it going. Now, how to ensure your reset goes into effect and I'm out your way? A lot of points, I know. I know. What you say? How to ensure your reset goes into effect. <clears throat> and I spelled the word reset. In order for my reset to go into effect, my change, thinking of my school differently, thinking about money differently, thinking about myself differently, I have to reflect on my current situation. I have to reflect. Why must you reset? Who must you reset for? Who must you change for? I don't care if me and my wife get in an argument. I have to reset. It'd be, so, it'd be funny sometimes because when we get into, you know, marriage has, we, we, we have arguments. When I get into an argument with her, I've learned over three years to just walk away. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you won, but you lost. I'm going to let you win. And what do you know what I do? Now, I'm, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm just, what I'm saying is, you know, I'm, I'm mostly wrong most of the time. So what I, what I do is I go to the grocery store. Grocery store is my happy place. I go to Whole Foods. Look at ingredients. Get my mind right. And she be having a nerve to still send me a honey do list. I'm like, honey, I don't want to do nothing for you. <laughs> I don't want to get you no, no, I don't want to get you no muffins. No, I don't want to get you no grapes. And my, my wife, she, she don't care how mad I am. She'll be like, I still need this though. So either way, I come home. And that long stairway up, upstairs, I'm still mad. I don't want to talk to her. And by the time I get to that last step, a smile on my face. It never fell. My Holy Spirit, I don't even want to smile. And I go right into the room, reset. Because if I stay mad and I let the sun go down on my wrath and the sun come up on my wrath, then I'm going to lose what I love. Sometimes you got to reset in the moment because you don't want to lose what you don't want to lose. And sometimes you got to begin to understand value. You got to begin to reflect and say, like I told my class the other day, I think, uh, I don't know, it was Jordan asked me this question. Somebody asked me this question about school here. And I said, listen, there are going to be places in your life you're not going to like being. There were many days I didn't like coming to school at Victor. There was many days. I wanted my beard to grow out. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But if I would have left in 10th grade and been like LeBron and took my talents to wherever, would I be standing before you today? No. My office, my old Spanish classroom, my homeroom class, my 11th grade homeroom. A lot of memories here, set in these same rooms. But while you're here, get what God has for you here. There's no reason. God has you here for a reason, even if it's for three months, even if it's for a year. And the devil, for some of you all, is trying to get you out of here. Because somebody offended you? I don't care if you just get from me. I don't care if you just get from Miss Cusack or or Miss Jeter. Get what you got to get while you're here. So change your current situation by improving yourself. Number two, E, expect more from yourself. Reflect or E, expect more from yourself. Excellence should be the goal. Excellence is different than perfection. I do everything as well as I can. I wear my best. I, I do my best. I give my best work. Listen, listen. Your, your zeros in your 50s is a reflection of you and what you expect of you. Listen, hey, listen, I suck that math too, so I understand. There's a lot of things I wasn't good at, but I learned in life, because I, I didn't master this in school, but I learned as I got older in life <clears throat> that I got to do everything to the best of my ability. Because I don't know who's watching me. So you got to expect more from yourself. 
because there's more in you. Number three, select. R, reflect. E, expect. S, select. You have to learn how to select and set new standards and priorities in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to reset. So the line is how to ensure your reset goes into effect. I worked on this, man. I worked on this about, I think I did this about 30 minutes. I'm like, man, I got to find, wait till you see my T. I had to, I had to find a good T for this, but anyway. <laughs> the S is select. Oh, man, I'm going over time. I got I to gotta speed through. Select. I have to select and set new standards and priorities in my life. God should be where in our life? Number one and everywhere, right? Center of it all. <laughs> Someone went to worship. That's the that Israel Hill song. It's Jesus and the center of it all. <laughs> I see you, Carson. You feel Jesus. Anyway. Man, what was my point? Select. But what was I saying before select? Oh, God number one. God number one. Do you know we all say that, like in econ, we say that 95% of people believe that uh, budgeting is important, right? But they say only 35% actually budget, right? 100% of the room in here says that God should be number one. But how much percentage room got God number 15? God number 23. Your bracket, your, middle, your uh, March Madness bracket got, <laughs> got your career at number one. And you got, you got uh, number one on the east over here. You got, you got all these different things on your bracket. And God said, you got me at 15 at Weber State. <laughs> you got me at 17 at North Atlantic Christian <laughs> And you wonder why God always upsets your number one seed. So I got to select new standards. I got to say, okay, I got to do, I got to live differently. I got to be different so I can have different. Number E, I'm, letter E. R, I got to reflect. E, I got to expect more of myself. Number three, I got to select better. And E, I have to eject all bad habits and people. E, E, yeah. Yes. Eject. Get rid of. Remove. Uh huh. Say this one. Yeah, I got you. R is to reflect. E is to expect more of yourself. S is to select standards and priorities. <clears throat> and E is to eject and then elect. Eject all bad habits. I got to get it out of my life. Do you know the way you're living right now will be, to a degree, how the things live beyond you? I got to elect better. Some of us are not good at picking friends. Some of us are not good at picking mates and, and boyfriends and girlfriends. Some of y'all, I'll be looking at who you picked today, and I'll be like, that's no offense, but that's what you want? What you want is a reflection of who you are. What you want, listen. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Um, for instance, will a healthy person want a sick person to marry? Would a rich person want to marry a broke person? Would a rich person or a financially literate person, would they want to marry a broke person? No. No. Let me tell you why. Since there's confusion, shh, real quick. Since there's confusion, let me help you. If my wife was bad with money, I wouldn't marry her. If I was bad with money, she wouldn't have married me. Because what happens when you're bad with money? You're on the street. If I was bad with money, there's not been one day in my marriage where my wife came home and that light didn't cut on. There's not been a day where she turned the water on and it wasn't hot. There wasn't a day that she came home and, and, and what she needed wasn't there. So imagine if I spent all my money in Vegas or I spent all my money somewhere else or gave all my money to another woman. Do you think she would stay with me? Last but not least, and I'm done. In order to ensure your reset goes into effect immediately. I have to reflect on my current situation. You have to reflect on your school right now, your schoolwork, and make the changes. You got to expect more of yourself. 
You got to say, hey, man, I can do better and I will do better. I have to select new standards and priorities. I have to eject all bad habits and learn how to elect properly. And last but not least, I must trust in the work of the trifecta. The Trinity or the Godhead. I had that T, it took me a lot of time to get that. Trifecta, T-R-I-F-E-C-T-A. I have to trust in the work of the trifecta. Another thesaurus word for trifecta is Trinity or the Godhead. I have to let God, I have to trust his work in me. Though the vision waits, though the vision, Terry, wait for it. Some people don't want to change and do things God's way because God is in their way. And what I mean by that is this. Some people don't want to follow God because they think God is going to mess up their plans. Let me tell you something about God. God always give you his best. But you have to be your best to match his best. And what I mean by that is this is that sometimes you just got to reset and trust the process. Right now, some of you all right now as seniors, you don't know what the next step is. Some of you all right now, it's like, I don't know what school I'm going to go to. I don't know what career I'm going to embark on. I don't know. if Right now, I have zero offers. I, I have nothing right now. God said, trust me. Some of you all right now are in situations right now where you don't see no end to it, but God says, trust me. A lot of you all are in positions right now where you're tempted to do things, but God says, trust me. God takes his time because what he has for you is 10 times better than you ever can think. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time you've given me to talk to these young people. Some of them in this room need to do a hard reset. They got to clear their whole hard drive off. They got to they got to they got to do that hard reset where they they lose uh, uh, unnecessary applications. They have to get certain apps off their phone because they're applying things. that's not what they what you want them to apply. Sometimes you father, a lot of us, we got to go all the way back to where we have a clean slate. And I pray, Father God, that if there's anyone in here that you're working in the midst now. With that being said, there's anybody in this room right now that says I need to do a hard reset, that that I haven't been reset at all, that that I, I don't even have the spirit of God in me, that 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 the light hasn't cut on in me spiritually, that 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 I that I, if God was to if you was to come back today, God, I might still be in my chair. And oh, what a bad day, a bad moment that'd be to still be in your chair while we in the air. If you're in this room and you say, man, I, I, I need to reset. I need to change. I need, I need, I, I, I need to make a difference. I, Lord, I need you to be the difference in my life. Raise your hand. Thank you. Good, good. If you're in this room right now, you say, man, I, God, I remember the moment that you reset me, that you cut that light on, that you, that you put me at the foundation of you, but I got away from you, God. I, 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 I'm gone. Like, 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 I didn't just slide. I, I'm on a slope. Like, I, I, I turned around and, and, and went down there, and I'm gone. And, but I need, to re, I need to reset some things. I need you to change my mind about some things. I need you to renew me. Bring me back to you, God. If that's you, raise your hand. I see those hands. Father, I thank you so much for these young people and the labor you gave me the opportunity to do for these young people. And I pray that they'll see you like I see you. Man, you've been so good to me. And I hope the same goodness that drew me to repentance to a hard reset, Father, will be the goodness that draws them to repentance as well. I love you, Father, and thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.